Hello everyone, welcome to and welcome back to my channel Book Time with Elvis with me, Mark. I do hope so much you're all doing very well indeed. Uh, New Year's is coming up, so I guess many of you are probably getting ready to party. Uh, me, uh, not so much, I suppose. Um, it's one of the tough things, of course, when you have a dog, um, and especially a dog that's affected by the New Year's celebrations and by fireworks, so I know I'll be up most of the night trying to preoccupy the little fellow uh, Elvis because he does take it pretty badly unfortunately and it's the the negative impact of living <clears throat> in the center of a city a well, city town um, and the public fire uh, works display is uh, literally just almost outside my front door so it's a bit hard but uh, I was reading uh, a few years ago about how to combat it and uh, they recommend all sorts of music and Bob Marley rates very highly. Though the problem is now, I think Elvis associates Bob Marley with uh, fireworks. So I don't know if it does too much to allay his uh, his stress. But hey-ho, we'll get there. We'll get through it. Uh, I might save all the uh, housework I've got to do till like uh, just before midnight so I can have some music blaring and uh, vacuum cleaners going and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm sure it won't bother the neighbours as they'll be up anyway, of course, so, yeah. Anyway, I'm here with a provisional uh, list of books to be read during the course of this fantastic extravaganza, year-long extravaganza of Historathon 2023. And to look at the books that I'm going to read uh, through the first three months of the year, covering the period prehistory, to 500 AD. This is provisional. The books I'm going to mention to you I am going to read, but it's not limited to these books because I can't help myself. And I will tell you, it was one of the toughest things uh, I've done yet on BookTube is selecting books to read uh, and not going over the top. And I may well have already gone over the top, so uh, we'll see. Now, I want to say there are three books that I will well, at least two books I will read throughout the course of the whole year uh, because their chapters span pretty much all of those uh, periods. Uh, one of them, uh, the third one, will probably span... Uh, it might span the whole history, I don't know, but at least it will go into the second uh, time period of 500 to 1500 uh, AD uh, from... Uh, April onwards. Um, so yeah, I'll start with those uh, before I come back to what I'm actually doing for the prehistory to 500 AD part. Now, one of them is a new addition to my uh, library, uh, which I mentioned in a, a book haul video I did uh, for Christmas. And it's Simon Sebag, Montefiore's massive book, uh, The World of Family History. And this really does cover uh, a huge amount of history. And I think, given its size as well, it would be perfectly manageable to just take the year to read it. Um, you know, uh, I think it's the way it's split up. Uh, it's not one flowing work, so it won't be uh, too difficult, you know, you know to, 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 to literally just read uh, a chapter here or there or a segment here or there. Um, it does seem really brilliant. I can read the inlay to you because I'm sure you're all very interested. Uh, we begin with the footsteps of a family walking along a beach 950,000 years ago. From here, Montefiore guides us on an exhilarating epic journey through the families that have shaped our world. The Caesars, the Medicis and Zulus, Ottomans and Moguls, Bonapartes, Habsburgs and Incas, Rothschilds, Rockefellers and Krups, Churchills, Kennedys, Castros, Nehru's, Pallavis, Kenyatta's, Saudis, Kim's, and Assad's. A rich cast of complex characters from the beating heart of the story, form the beating heart of the story. Some are famous or infamous leaders from Alexander the Great, Attila the Hun, uh, Mansa, Musa, Ivan the Terrible, and Genghis Khan to Hitler, Thatcher, Obama, Putin, and Zelensky. Some are creative from Socrates, Michelangelo, and Shakespeare, to Newton, Mozart, Balzac, Freud, Bowie, and Berners-Lee. 
Others are lesser known. Hong Wu, who began life as a beggar and founded the Ming Dynasty. Uh, Kam, Kam, Cham, Cha, Kam Cham Cha, is that right? Uh, conqueror of Hawaii. Zenobia, empress who defied Rome. King Henry of Haiti. Lady Murasaki, the first female novelist. Sayada al Hura, Moroccan pirate queen. Here are not just conquerors and queens, but prophets, charlatans, actors, gangsters, artists, scientists, doctors, tycoons, lovers, wives, husbands and children. This is world history on the most grand and intimate scale, spanning centuries, continents and cultures, and linking themes of war, migration, plague, religion, medicine and technology to the people at the centre of the human drama. A spell, a spell binding as fiction, the world captures the story of humankind, in its joy, sorrow, romance, ingenuity and cruelty, in a groundbreaking single narrative that will forever shift the boundaries of what history can achieve. Now, if that doesn't sound good, you know, sounds awesome, doesn't it? I read that, um, you know, when I saw it uh, in the, in some review, I thought, yeah, that looks amazing. And I like Montefiore. He's, he's good. I've got a few of his Russian books, uh, which I will plan to read, hopefully, towards the end of the year. Well, at least as we move into the more uh, modern period. So yeah, this one is a year-long read for me, and I know that. And it's nice, it's relaxing going in to think, right, you know, there we go. So six minutes in, I've only talked about one book, so I do apologise for that. Let's let's move on. Another one that I plan to take the whole year to read is much, much smaller, but no less uh, wide in its in its scope. And it's a children's book, and it's one I've had for many years, and I've read uh, many years ago. Uh, and it's uh, Hendrik Willem van Loon's Story of Mankind. And it is, again, a history of the world, uh, pretty much from, uh, well, I suppose the beginning, really. Uh, at least uh, the beginning of the human story. All the way up to, I want to say there was some more modern... Uh, yeah, all the way up to the year 2000. So that should be interesting. It was a uh, Newbery uh, Award winner uh, back in the day, but I believe uh, the uh, more recent chapters were added uh, were added later. But, you know, it's not very big. I'm just going to read, you know, the relevant chapters to the period uh, which I happen to be in at the time. And another one I don't think will take the whole year, but it will be split up through the different periods, is The Tribes of Britain by David Miles. Uh, who are we and where do we come from? Uh, the we, of course, being Britons, uh, of which I am one. Uh, so I think that would be interesting. I've owned it for a while and I haven't read it. Uh, who are the English, the Irish, the Scots and the Welsh? A rag bag of migrants reflecting thousands of years of continuity and change. Now scientific techniques can explore this complex genetic jigsaw, ancient Britons and Saxon Celts and Romans, Vikings and Normans, and the more recent migrations which have created these multicultural islands. So I suppose it's more maybe sociological, but I think it still fits in with history because, you know, people are products of uh, the history or historical experiences they have as well. And I think uh, you know, history uh, can go hand in hand with this kind of work. So, although, as I say, it may be erring on popular science, I don't mind. It's still going in there. And that's at least going to take us through uh, maybe, well, no, I just said through to modern times. So, again, it might take me a year. Depends how the book's split up. So, if I end up finishing it, um, you know, earlier, it doesn't matter. That's the difficulty when you read these multi-era uh, books. But anyway, concentrating on the prehistory to 500 AD, uh, I'm going for, I'm starting off quite prehistory here. Uh, I haven't got a physical copy uh, of this book. And this is, if you can see there, Kindred, Neanderthal Life, Love, Death and Art by Rebecca Rag Seitz. Again, um, combination there of the science with the history but uh, I, I, I'm fascinated by the Neanderthals. I wanted to read a book on uh, the rise of the mammals but you know I suppose keeping in the spirit of things I would keep it within uh, human history 
and although I'm stretching the definition there probably a little bit, uh, they were humanoid, so, and probably some of us carry their DNA within us. Uh, you can probably just look at me and realize I probably have some. Um, so yeah, I think that would be uh, good fun and very interesting uh, to read. Next up, I'm certainly more conventional as we move in, but I don't want to keep just European uh, based books. Now, this one's going to be a challenge because it's massive, but again, I plan to take the whole three months to, you know, leisurely uh, work my way through it, and it is the Nihongi, uh, the Chronicles of Japan from the earliest times to AD 697. So, actually, that gives me uh, a little bit more time, doesn't it? Because I can go through the three months and then a week or two into the next part uh, from 500 AD up to at least the 697 AD there. So it does look daunting, but when you realize just how many footnotes there are, um, how many uh, notes or just bits of information that, you know, if needs be, you could probably maybe gloss over, but they're not particularly, uh, you know, uh, the chock-a-block on the page there. So I think, although it's massive, uh, it will be uh, an interesting uh, read. And staying with uh, East Asia, I want to read uh, John Mann's The Terracotta Army, China's First Emperor and the Birth of a Nation, uh, takes place in the 200 uh, BC time frame, something like that. So that perfectly fits in. John Mann, he, people have mixed uh, opinions about his style. He's very uh, readable, I think, very readable historian. And he does do, um, you know, these kind of, uh, what can I say? I, I guess easier. They're less challenging but enjoyable histories. So uh, given the fact I do have uh, a massive read uh, of a non-history book, uh, coming up in January, which is uh, Victor Hugo's Les Miserables. I need to keep it fairly, um, fairly light. I think in my other reading, as I say, I'm not too fussed by the Nihongi because I, I know I can take the three months or you know three months plus two weeks or whatever it is to 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 read that. So that's okay. Uh, that keeps it quite light. And also coming up in February with Vin, uh, the organizer of this wonderful event, Historathon, all the co-hosts will be uh, linked down below. With Vin and Stephanie, uh, with Vin from Reverend Reads and Stephanie Cohen, we will be reading uh, Xenophon. Now those two have gone uh, all out with the uh, landmark editions. Now, I know those landmark editions are, are great, uh, but I decided to keep it more old school and for the two Xenophon books, I've I've gone for the Penguin Classics. Um, confusingly, they don't follow the same name, like uh, Hellenica and uh, Anabasis. Instead, we have Xenophon's Persian Expedition and Xenophon's A History of My Times. But, you know, the works are the same. Uh, I think a big part of the them going for the landmark is because of the wonderful maps and things like that. Now, I don't know, it's not something that uh, necessarily adds to my uh, understanding or enjoyment. I did buy the landmark Thucydides, and it is wonderful, and I would probably love to have them all, but I can't really justify the cost, uh, especially uh, having not read uh, them before. If it was like uh, Herodotus, uh, I wouldn't mind, because I would collect many different editions of uh, Herodotus's histories. But, um, yeah, I think for now I'm, I'm actually quite content with uh, using the, the, the Penguin Classics. And if I need any extra maps, there is the internet and things available to me. And sometimes I haven't been super impressed with the uh, translations of some of the works within the landmarks. So the extra information is invaluable and wonderful, but I'm not sure necessarily it's always the best translation but we'll see I mean I'll see how those two get on with their editions uh, and uh, perhaps they might talk me into it. I was pretty tempted Stephanie shared a picture of uh, Anabasis in a beautiful cobalt blue 
cover and you know that alone almost or you know i wavered almost uh, when it came to that so but those are for february and then in march i plan to do a couple of roman things uh one of them being suetonius's the lives of the caesars or 12 caesars depending what you want to call it where he looks through uh the lives and deaths and murders and all that kind of stuff of the different roman emperors from julius caesar uh, you know, 12 of them or so in total. And I have uh, listened to this as an audiobook, actually, but it's a long time ago. It's almost 20 years ago. Um, and it was uh, very entertaining. Now, I think the one I listened to was the Penguin uh, Classics version, and that was translated by uh, Robert Graves. Uh, who wrote I, Claudius, in this uh, Oxford World Classics. This is a newer one by Catherine Edwards. So we'll see how that goes. Should be good. And then uh, also in March, uh, I will be looking at Pliny, Pliny the Younger, his complete letters. So it's more of a, I suppose, primary historical uh, document there by reading uh, the letters of somebody living at that particular time. And I think that would be interesting and I look forward very much to that. Now, I'm committed to these books, I think, pretty much. I'll let you know if anything changes, but this is what I've narrowed it down to. Um, but it's not exclusive. As I say, I did, my moves going in and out. I was looking at some of these wonderful 24 hours in ancient Rome or 24 hours in ancient Greece or ancient Athens books, which are very easy to read and a bit of fun. So, you know, some of those might make their way in at some point, some shorter works. I do have a plan to look at some of the public domain works, and I would recommend that to you if you are thinking you would like to take part, but you don't want to fork out money for expensive uh, history books, then do think about Project Gutenberg uh, for some wonderful, uh, albeit archaic, history books. Uh, I mean, if you want to read something like um, the Lives of the Caesars, uh, you'll probably find that on Project Gutenberg. Uh, it will be an older translation, but, you know, if you read uh, Dickens or whatever, then it's not going to be a problem for you to read a Victorian translation of uh, a Latin or Greek uh, text, I think. Uh, it might be a little bit drier than some of these more modern translations, but I think you'll be fine with it. And there are some nice, fun little ones. There'll be some for, for kids, actually, which will be easy reads uh, or easier reads as well. So there's a wealth of stuff on Project Gutenberg uh, for you to download for free if you would like to take part but don't want to spend uh, the money in getting history books, which can be expensive, especially if history is not your normal um, genre to read. Uh, you may not have some lying around. And, of course, you do have your local libraries as well, which would be a wonderful source of uh, material should you wish to take part in this event. And I encourage you to do so. I mean, it's, it's a nice thing to put yourself out of your uh, comfort zone and to uh, experience this. There's a wonderful Voxer group going on, very chatty, very communicative, and it will, you know, the people there will give you support and advice on what to read. So, you know, Tell me down below that you specifically want to join the Voxer group and I'll be happy to add you uh, or any of my other co-hosts. You know, as I say, their channels are linked down below. Check them out. Check out their videos. Uh, they'll also be on hand to help you. And the group has now grown to include some of the people who are joining the event who want to take part in that. And, you know, I urge you to do so as well. Why not? You know, uh, it doesn't hurt. And we can really learn a lot from uh, history and as as uh, as I said in the last video, it can certainly be even more exciting than uh, than fiction. So you know, there we go. So there we have it, everybody. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, if you have any other suggestions, if you if you know any books that fall within the prehistory to five hundred AD period that you think Mark, you absolutely must read this. Let me know. You know, because even if I don't get to it this year, it will absolutely go on my list for next year because. I believe this will be an event that will carry on uh, probably for as long as, uh, you know, well, until BookTube itself becomes a thing of history, you know, because there's no end to it. You know, we can keep going on and on with this. 
That's it, everybody. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be back between now and uh, New Year's. If I'm not, then Elvis and I do very much wish you a happy New Year and all the best health and happiness for 2023. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.